Job chapter 42, I'll be reading from verse 1 to 19. The book of Job 42, I begin to read from 1 to 19. If you are there, say read on. All right, everybody should know it because anybody who has suffered knows Mr. Job. <laughs> Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything. <laughs> and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You asked, who is this who hides cancer without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you, and you shall answer me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now, my eyes, <laughs> my eyes sees you, and I want to declare to somebody, you have been hearing about God. Tako teke poso kapatinkaya. You have been hearing about God through other people's testimonies. After this March meeting, you shall see God. I say, you shall see God. You know, I boast a lot about this congregation all over the world. And I normally tell them why God works wonders in our midst. And God does not think about it. God does not consult. He doesn't think about it. It's because of the way we are prepared and res very responsive to the word of God. And so I pray that you will be so sharp in your spirit to be able to be saying amen and be screaming at what the scripture is saying. Therefore, I have hung myself and repent in dust and ashes. And so it was. After the Lord has spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends. For you have not spoken of me what, what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For I will accept him. Lest I deal with you accordingly to your fooling, because you have not spoken of me with what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Tamanite, and Bidad, and Shuhite, and Zophar the Namatite, went and did as the Lord commanded them. For the Lord has accepted Job. And the Lord restored. I just love this congregation. I just love you so much. And the Lord restored Job's losses. When he prayed for his friends, indeed the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers, all his sisters, all those who had been his acquaintances before, came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Now, the Lord blessed. <laughs> the latter days of Job, more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, the name of the second Kezia, the name of the third Keren Hapuk. In all the land, we have found no women so beautiful <laughs> as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years. And saw his children, and 
and saw his grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of days. Lift up your hands to the Almighty God. Say after me, my father, my father, I believe the scriptures. The word of God is alive. The word of God is the truth. I stand upon the truth that can never be corrupted to declare that I shall be a beneficiary of today's message. Father, let the scripture benefit my life, benefit my family. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, I have decreed. Come on, give Jesus a round of applause as you have your seat. Have your seat. The story of Mr. Job and his family is well known to all of us. It remains the greatest story of personal and family restoration the world has ever known. The family of Job's story remains the, light, the greatest, the best, the most beautiful story of restoration on a personal level and on a family level. Their story started so well as the wealthiest in the East, but along the way, the strange wind of life blew on him and his family and sent him to oblivion. But the story of his end is one of the most beautiful the world has ever known. This confirms that the end will always be better than the beginning. May there never be a better yesterday in your life in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. May there never be a better yesterday in your life if you believe it, the Lord shall bring it to pass. Can I hear you say amen? There are so many lessons that we can learn from the life of Job. But you will allow me to share a few. Number one, life is in phases. And life has many phases. Life is in phases. And also life has many phases. If you look at Job chapter 1, from verse 1, the Bible gives us an introduction of this man and his family. That was phase one of their life. Their phase one, the phase one of their lives was a phase that everybody wanted to have. And the phase gives them the phase in the society. The face of your life gives the face in your season. It is the face that you are in that presents the face that people see of you. So that face was a very beautiful face. A very powerful American actress gave a quote by the name Sharon Stone. She's an American actress. And I want to quote her. She said, A woman has many faces as she goes through her life. It's like we need more than one hairdo. We have many, many changes in the evolution of our lives. We have, we learn, and we grow. We view life differently, and life views us differently. End of quote. This actress says, life is full of faces and phases. That is like a woman changing hairdo. Today you have another style. Tomorrow you plait. Next week you change. Ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that whether we believe it or not, life has phases. Life has phases. And I want you to know that life is not a straight graph. Life can
can never be a straight graph. Life can never be a smooth and straight road. It can never be a straight road. There must be bumps. There must be valleys. There must be crooked ways. There must be rough, rough paths. King Solomon affirms this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. He reminds us that life is seasonal. The summary of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is life is seasonal. Life phases and phases come to everyone. Another fellow quoted by the name Shruti D. The fellow says some hard phases of life we teach you the biggest lessons of life. These memories will stay in our hearts forever. More importantly, it will end up with changing yourself, myself. So Job, when he saw the magnitude of the restoration God gave him, he said, <laughs> I have seen phases. There is this song I love so much. In fact, if not for shortness of time, I would have asked my friend, Sister Flo Ambayo, to have prepared it. Uh, I, don't, I can't see, but if Flo, are you here today? Yeah, there is this song I love so much. I would have loved you to do it, but there is no time. I've gone to many places. I've seen many faces. You know that song? He says, but through it all, I have learned to trust in him. You know it. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God True it all all. Sing it True it all I have learned I have learned To depend upon upon His word Thank you You know that song You've gone to so many places You have seen many faces You have passed, passed through many seasons in life There is one lesson these things teach us That lesson is, I have learned to depend on him. I have learned to bank on his word. I have learned to trust in Jesus. May we, after this meeting, see Jesus in our situations. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I don't know which face you are right now, or which face you are carrying right now. I don't know the face you are right now in your life. I don't know the season of your life. You also may not know the season of my life. And when I talk about the face we are carrying, some of us may think it is just the face that are filled with cosmetics. Thank God for faces of cosmetics. But there are faces that when you go back and wash off the the cosmetics, you look at yourself in the mirror and you tell yourself, this is my true face. So I don't know which face you are in or which face you are carrying. Job had everything beautiful, but phase two came and he lost all. The only survivor apart from Job was his wife, Mrs. Job, a miserable survivor. (laughs) The only one that left could have been better, she went and the children remained. Because in the time of a difficult phase in the husband's life, she became a thorn on his flesh. When we continue, you will see, Job became so physically ugly. The Bible says that his body was filled with boils. He became physically ugly that the woman woke up one day, looked at him and wondered, is this the man that we went to altar together? He told, she told him, I, I am okay to live as a widow. You can go. <laughs> because for as long as you don't die, I will not remarry. Are you seeing that woman? So, and the only way you can die is to curse God because nothing else can kill you as I'm looking at you. <laughs> you cannot die as I'm looking at you. Because with all the problems you are seeing here, So what else can kill you, Job? I know only one secret to your death. Curse God and die. She didn't say curse God so that we... (laughs) 
You know, a, a credible wife who felt that this trouble is too much, we can't bear it any longer. I can't stand seeing my husband suffer this way. Could have said, God, I have taken enough. I can't watch this man suffer like this. Kill me, I don't want to see the face. You know the way that Hagar said, I don't want to see the death of my child. Let me go. That's a good wife. A good wife will say, my husband, I can't stand your pain. Let me die. I don't want to watch what you are going through. Or a good wife will say, let us die. Let God also put this problem in me so that we can die. But she, he said, I, I die, go where? No, I'm not going anywhere. You, you die, you go. The husband looked at her and said, stupid woman, foolish woman, you are talking like those, those women on the street. You don't understand. The woman became a thorn on his flesh. Do you know that sometimes in our moment of distress, in our moments of pain, in our moments of agony, the people we love most can hurt you most. Am I speaking to people? Am I speaking to people? You hear what they say, you can't believe it. And I'm telling you what I've gone through, you know it. You know it very well. Don't you know? You hear what they say. You can't imagine. You can't imagine that somebody could open his mouth or her mouth and say that thing about you. In your moment of pain, in your moment of agony, the people you love most, the people you care for, you people you've invested into, can be the most dangerous weapon against you. But I thank God, because through it all, we have learned to trust in him and to depend in him, on him. So I don't know which phase you are in now, but I have good news for you. The phase of humiliation has come to an end. The phase of agony and pain has come to an end. The phase of poverty and lack and scarcity and shame in this meeting in the month of my, uh, my, uh, uh, February, I am here to announce their seasons have expired. Number two, absolute and resolute trust in the Lord. Absolute and resolute trust in the Lord. Job chapter 13, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. <laughs> Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. When we are going through phases in life, this is all that the Lord requires from you. God wants to hear you say, God, in this situation, I have absolute trust in you. My faith is in you. My trust is in you. My confidence is in you. I am trusting you completely. God wants you to come to a point where you say, God, my networks have failed me. My bank account has failed me. My intelligence has failed me. Medical doctors have failed me. Family people have failed me. Church has failed me. God, in this time, I stand to declare my trust, my confidence, my hope, my assurance, my strength, my son, my grace, my grace, my power, everything about me is in you, Jesus. It's 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 in you, Jesus. Every other thing has failed. People have failed. Systems have failed. Society have failed. The church have failed. Friends have failed. My mother has failed. My father has failed. My husband has failed. My wife has failed. Our business has failed. Our career has failed. The God, God. Job came 
come to that point. He said, even if God now decides to slay me, not even to kill me, to slay. If he decides to take a panga, cut off hand, as he's cutting, I'll still be saying, I trust you. He said, God, it has come to a point where I wake up and things are not working the way I had planned. I had expected. I have fasted for 40, 50 days and 50 nights. I have fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I have fasted for 21 days and 21 nights. And God, I'm not seeing the result. That I wake up and I make a choice. And that choice is that I shall trust you all the way. I shall trust you all the way. When you tell God that, two things happen in your life. Number one, Romans chapter 8, 28 becomes a reality. All things will eventually work out together for your good. Whenever you put and bank your confidence in the Lord, I can guarantee you all things will end up working together for your good. Number second thing that happens is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says, He will make all things beautiful in his time. <laughs> Two powerful things that always escort people that have absolute trust in the Lord is that it doesn't matter how they have fallen seven times, beaten many a billion times, disgraced many times at the end meet them all things end up working for their good and all things end up becoming beautiful in his time can I stand and tell you it's only God that has the power to make uh, positive and negative equal to positive <laughs> nobody else can do it no mathematician Positive plus negative equal to positive. That is our God. But the one that will shock you is that negative plus negative is equal to positive. That is God. This God I am boasting about is the only mathematician that says zero plus zero is hundred. If you doubt it, him have five loaves of bread and two fishes fed over 5,000 people. That is the professor of mathematics. Mathematics. Five loaves, five shillings, two shillings, feed over 5,000 family members. If you doubt it, ask the widow of Zerapet. How a barrel of meal and a cruise of oil can sustain you for years of famine. <laughs> that is the God I am boasting about. That is the God I am talking about. As the widow of Zarephath, how a cruise of oil and a barrel of meal can sustain you for three and a half years. The famine in the land, Elijah calls for a famine for three and a half years. And through three and a half years, a barrel of meal and a cruise of oil sustained a family. That is the mathematician I'm talking about. If you doubt it, ask the widow in 2 Kings chapter 4 that was asked, what do you have at home? He said a little oil and he was told, she was told, go and borrow vessels. Go and borrow vessels. Keep on pouring the oil. Keep on pouring the oil. Keep on pouring the oil, and the oil shall not waste. If you doubt me, consult Elijah. And Elijah will tell you that there is a time a board can feed you. A board can be a bakery agency. And a bakery agency can be filled by the birds in the sky. And the ravens can be bringing you food in the morning and the evening. And they know your address. They know your location. They know your home address. 
and they don't miss it. And the boss are dropping you. If you doubt me, ask Mrs. Dockers. <laughs> A woman that died. And funeral service has been organized. And suddenly some women say, this one cannot go. The women said, not this woman. Close the burial ground, close the grave. This one is not going. Look at the cloth she gave me. Look at the shoe she gave me. Look at the bag she gave me. Look at the fees she paid for my child. Look at what she did for me. Look at what she did for me. Look at what she did for me. Why they were presenting the things she did? Don't cast. Peter said, this one is a serious matter. This one is a serious matter. The women came to Pastor Peter. Apostle Peter, you shall not bury this one. And Apostle Peter said, give me one second. Let me tell you, brethren, women, we will pray on this earth until we tell God, this one cannot go. My child will not go. My family members will not go. My business will not go. This one shall not go. Do you know, as we are talking to the apostle, apostle consulted God. And God said that I, if it comes to women matters, <laughs> God said, if it were men who sent you Peter, I can say no. And they will say, it's okay. It's okay. Let's not disturb God. Maybe it's the will of God. He said, women sent you. Ah, Peter, if we, <laughs> if we do not respond, I will not attend to anybody on earth. It will be dockers in the morning, dockers in the afternoon, dockers in the evening. And, and listen, and listen to this. Listen to this. If we do not attend to them, they will mobilize more women. <laughs> the next thing you will see is WhatsApp groups. Tell God in your WhatsApp, eh? Dockers is not going. What's up, P? Dockers is not going. The next thing you will see, social, social media. The world pray, Dockers is not going. God said, before we get into a situation we did not plan for. Dockers, where are you? Dockers came and said, I'm not going. He said, you are going. They are calling you. Dockers said, ah, ah, I made it by chance, by the blood. God said, I said, Dockers, I need peace in heaven. Come, come. All of a sudden, right in the midst of women, the dead arose. There was a restoration. There was a restoration. There was a restoration. There was a restoration. I see your dockers shall rise. Your dockers shall rise. Your investment shall rise. Your investment shall rise again. Today, we cannot take no as an answer. Today, we shall not resign to alternatives. Dorcas represents our investments in life. He rep she represents our kindness, our generosity, our service to humanity. The Lord shall raise Everything that you have sown in life that has been considered dead, they shall rise again in the name of Jesus. Number three, maintain the right attitude. Maintain the right attitude. Every trial of faith that comes to a child of God 
has one ultimate agenda, and that is to move you to curse God so that you can die spiritually. Every trial of faith that comes to a child of God has the agenda to disconnect you from God so that the enemy will mess you up completely. Every trial of faith that comes to a child of God is to sow a seed of bitterness in you against God and people. If you can resist this temptation, then I can assure you that you will emerge victoriously. Job chapter 27. Job chapter 27, from verse 1. As God lives, who has taken away my justice, and the Almighty, who has made my soul bitter, as long as my breath is in me, and the breath of God is in my nostrils, my lips will not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Far be it from me that I should say you are right. Till I die, I will not put away my integrity. Till I die, till I die, till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast. I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me for as long as I live. I want you to note, the right attitude is the winning attitude. The right attitude is the winning attitude. This can be difficult in times of challenges, but by God's grace, it is doable. To get the right attitude in the midst of losses, the following must be in place. Number one, you must maintain the right company. In the time of trials, in the time of challenges, intentionally maintain the right company. We have the example of Ruth and Naomi. Number two, maintain the right fellowship for spiritual capacity building. In the time of challenges, where you fellowship is very key. In time of challenges, where you worship is very key to your recovery. Maintain the right fellowship for spiritual capacity building to face the trials of life. Number four. Number three. Speak positively to yourself and to your circumstances. Speak positively. Even when things are not cooperating. Speak positively to the situations and speak positively to yourself. Why? Your words create life, so it can trigger restoration. The words we speak, they are spirits and they are life. So when you keep on saying, I don't care what I'm saying, I speak the word of God. The word of God shall prevail in this situation. The word of God shall win in this situation. Keep speaking positively. Because every negative word you speak, it will be stamped by the enemy. The next one, I don't know which number. Number four. It can't be number four. It, because number one is maintain the right company. Number two, right fellowship. Number three, okay, speak positively. Number four, keep working on that particular matter and never give up. In other words, don't throw in the towel in that matter. Disturb like the widow that disturbed the judge. Be persistent. Keep working on that particular matter and never give up on it. Why? Tough times never last, but tough people do. <laughs> Number five, maintain your integrity. Don't compromise or take shortcuts or do fix quick, a quick fix. Don't compromise your conscience. Don't compromise your values. Don't compromise your belief. Don't accept shortcuts. And don't go for quick fix. 
and you will see restoration. Let's go to point number four. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Job chapter 42 verse 9. From verse 9. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Namahite, the Namatite went and did as the Lord commanded them. For the Lord had accepted Job. And the Lord restored Job losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. The word we have read suggests that in the absence of forgiveness, there wouldn't have been restoration. Restoration of Job happened at the nick of forgiveness. Several other things have happened, but the Bible is so clear to tell us that the restoration came as soon as he prayed for his friends. When we forgive, we release ourselves from men's captivity and harassment. Unforgiveness is the gateway to self-imprisonment. Unforgiveness is the gateway to self-imprisonment. It creates doors for emotional and physical abuse that lead to breakdowns. Unforgiveness is the fertilizer for growing depression and subsequently madness. I have ministered to some people that have emotional problems. I can tell you at the root of majority of them laid the seed of bitterness. The seed of unforgiveness. I will not forgive. I will not forgive. And even when you are telling them to forgive, if you see how they will cry, they will cry telling you that this issue has become cancerous. I've always told you, never license people to hurt your emotions. Never. The much they can do is to offend you. Don't allow them to hurt you. Because hurt comes with pains. But I can tell you, some of you will be saying, easier said than done. Mommy, you have not been offended before. I'm telling you, offenses have been coming, and as I'm talking to you, offenses still come. But there is this power of prayer and grace where you fight for your right without bitterness. Where you can sleep and tell God, Jesus, if you come today, I will not miss it. Last Sunday in our family devotion, we were teaching the children, we read a particular scripture, and we were teaching them that in our family lineage, we don't hold grudges. We told them in our gene, we don't have bitterness. And we were telling them, never grow up a bitter man or a bitter lady. And we told them, if there is anybody that has offended you, this week, you must release that fellow, offer forgiveness. And uh, if you don't want to relate with the fellow again, no problem. But don't ever shut down communication link. Daddy told them, he said, when you shut down communication link, you are saying completely, I've written this one off. And I gave them an example. I told them that there is a woman that offended me so bitterly. And I actually explained to them. I said, this woman, when she turned 50, I attended her birthday, even when I had no, I had no ground to be there. Daddy and I. I said, when she did 50 years, we had no reason to be there. There was no reason in the place of friendship to attend that party. The two of us decided, we will go. We went for the party. I said, when the husband turned 60, I sent texts to both her and the husband to wish them well for their 60th birthday and to explain why I could not show up. I had a ministration at Pastor Jane's church. Pastor Jane, you are here. I was ministering that day at Ongata Ronga in their women conference. So I could not attend the party. I had to explain on text. When their daughter wedded, 
I was uh, telling the children, I said I was flying in from U.S. And at the lounge, I sent congratulatory, powerful prayer message when their daughter wedded. I told them, let me now tell you. I said, I turned 50. A card was given to her and the husband. They never showed up. They never congratulated me till today they see me. They've never said happy birthday. I said, daddy turned 60. The wife never sent a text. The wife never said, daddy, happy birthday. I said, our child, our first son wedded. We sent a wedding card. I never got a text from this woman to say, happy happy uh, marriage for your son. We jammed somewhere. Daddy was there when we jammed. That was when she said, ah, congratulations. So, and I told her that you we have the first that we gave card. She began to give so many reasons. I came home, I said, shame to kingdom citizens. So I told our children this story. I told them, don't go that way. That is the way of a foolish woman. I told them, rejoice with those that are rejoicing. I said, that's life. That's what life offers. Forgiveness is powerful. Forgiveness is a winning tool. Forgiveness opens doors unending. Forgiveness is a fertilizer for explosion. Forgiveness is a platform for restoration. Never accept in your heart for the seed of bitterness to grow in you. Why? It hinders progress. It shows the heavens from favoring a man. It stops restoration aggressively. Let's look at Job's restoration, how they came in multiples. I will quickly rush over 13 of them. Just listing them to let you know the power of forgiveness. And so those of you that are seated here, I can guarantee you, the greatest restoration is when God tells a man, you are forgiven. <laughs> that is the greatest restoration. When God tells a man, you are forgiven. Come, you are forgiven. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where, how far you've gone away from me. You are forgiven. And the good news is that once God rest, uh, forgives, there is a restoration. Restoration of favor with God. Restoration of open heavens over your life. It, it, God cannot forgive you and you remain the same. It's not possible. So I want us to see 13 things that will begin to come your way. Between now and January 2023. Job chapter 42. We, are we have already read it. All the way to verse 17. I will base the 13 list from them. Number one. The latter was better and bigger than the beginning. In other words... When God restores, when God decides to restore, there is no way your latter will not be better than where you started from. It is not possible. And so I don't care whether you started so big, whether you started so small, but along the way some things have been lost, visibly and invisibly. Many things have been lost in your life. Many things have been lost in your life. I can assure you that today, I want you to embrace every new day with assurance that you will never have a better yesterday in your life. <laughs> so the latter will always be bigger and better than the former. Number two, his health was restored. Today, as we take the Holy Communion, all these 13 things will forcefully begin to follow you. 
by the Holy Communion, your health shall be restored. Number three, his physical appearance was restored and renewed. Remember that he had boils all over his body. His friends could not recognize him. His friends looked at him and could not recognize him. His physical appearance was restored and renewed. I want you to know that those of you that think you're aging too fast, by the power of this meeting, there shall be a reverse gear. God will renew your organs. The organs in your body system, organs shall begin to become like organs of youth, like organs of youth. Certain things shall begin to happen in your life that people shall see you. And your age mate will see you and ask you, are you our age mate? May the Lord rest that grace upon your lives in the name of Jesus. As I spoke to you now, a powerful song came to my mind. I can't sing it, but I can say it. <laughs> you will be better in the, in the end than in the beginning. Your latter shall be better than your former. Your latter shall be greater than your former. The, uh, when I see you in the end, you shall be better than before. You know that song. Glory be to God. So shall it be to whom, who, uh, to he or she that believes. Amen. Number four. His emotional and psychological abilities were restored. When you are going through trials of faith, you are traumatized. You are traumatized. Emotionally, you are destabilized. And the enemy begins to speak several things. I wonder what went through the emotions of Job. But his emotions and psych were restored. Number five, his relationships were restored with added value of honor and favor. The Bible says all his friends, all his family members, you know when, <laughs> when he had problems, we didn't hear about the friends. We only had about some few friends, and they came miserably also. We didn't hear of family members. All of them disappeared. Do you know that? In the whole story, we didn't hear that the family members were going for prayers on his behalf. Everybody disappeared. And remember that they used to come to eat in his house. When problem came, they were not calling him. They were not picking up calls. They disappeared. When they heard that God has restored, they gathered in the house. And the Bible said when they were coming, they came with rings, meaning that they were wealthy. They couldn't help in the time of need. So why bring me gold after God has restored me? They were coming for favor. So that their names will appear that they came and we dropped for you one earring. That is human being. They can never change you. They can never change. Number six, his wealth was doubled. So that he can take care of those miserable friends and relatives. The wealth was doubled. Number seven, his children were fully restored with added value of beauty. All the daughters became Miss East in one day. Miss East in one day. Number eight, his social status was restored. Fame and honor began to follow him everywhere in the society. Not just among friends and relatives, but even among enemies. And how am I sure of this? Till today we are preaching about Mr. Job. Several years after his death. Number nine, wasted time and opportunities were fully restored. All the wasted time and opportunities that passed him by, they were fully restored. Number 10, he became a priest to his friends. They actually offered seven bulls and seven rams for, for sacrifice and for prayer. Maybe we shall start that. That anybody that offends you, <laughs> when they are coming for forgiveness, they should come with seven rams and seven bulls. 
Number 11, cultural and traditional barriers were broken because his daughters got inheritances against Jewish culture. The reason why the Bible was very clear to say, and he gave his daughters inheritances, is to tell us that that was against the culture of the Jews. Women don't get inheritances, but God broke that protocol to compensate for lost children. Number 12, he enjoyed his children to the fourth generation. What is a generation? A generation is between 25 to 30 years. So what it means is that this man saw all his children, his grandchildren, and that's why he lived 140 years to see the fourth generation. I pray that I see my, my children to the fourth generation. Number 13. He enjoyed long life. Full of life, not full of hospital issues, in and out. Full of life and full of health. Because when God restores, he adds values. I want you to know that the restoration that is coming today will come with values. Job died being old and full of days. Despite all losses, God ensured that he lived to fully enjoy his restoration and divided his will accordingly to his children. How many of you want to be the one to share the property for your children? May nobody else do it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. He divided the property for the children. There was no family fight. He left and hesitated peacefully. <laughs> there are people who prayed so much for restoration, and indeed it came, but they didn't live to enjoy it. My prayer for us is that we will not only have restoration, but we shall be alive to enjoy it. Amen. Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 7. Isaiah 61 from verse 7 says, Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land. And everlasting joy will be yours. Isaiah 65 from verse 21. Isaiah 65 from 21 says, They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them. Or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain. I will not labor in vain. My service to God shall not be in vain. Your service to God shall not be in vain. Your labor in your family shall not be in vain. Your labor in the service of God shall not be in vain. You will not build and another fellow occupies. You will not plant and another eat. You shall eat what you have planted. As we talk about forgiveness, let's pay attention to Job 22:21. Look at what Job says, his testimony in Job twenty-two twenty-one. 21. He says, Acquaint now thyself with God and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto you. Team up with God now. Be at peace with God now. Then restoration will come. Team up. He's giving somebody an advice. He's saying restoration is coming. There is something that left you. Restoration is coming. And he says, team up with God. Unite with God. Surrender to God. Join yourself with God. Restore the relationship between you and God. And then something will begin to happen. Today is a very serious opportunity. Because soon we shall lay the table for Holy Communion. 
And at this feast, Jesus will be sitting and will be distributing the bread of restoration. The, 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 the wine of restoration. And one thing that Holy Communion re reminds us of is redemption. The power of redemption. The power of forgiveness. The power of restoration between man and God. Which God did for me in 1984. Restored me back to God. Brought me back to Jesus in 1984. Even when I was the chaplain of the Protestant community in the campus. God restored me. God made me to see that religion can never purchase salvation. Religion can never offer redemption. Nothing. Never. I was the Protestant champion, chaplain, preaching in the, to the students in the campus. But I was not saved. And I remember every time the Christian Union people will tell me, you are a material for God. Every time they met me, they say, if only... You can switch. You are a material. And I thank God that in 1984, I did. I did. And today, I am a material. Whether you believe it or not, I am a material. Their prophecy came to pass because I swallowed my ego. I swallowed my ego of title. I swallowed my pride of what we people say. This fellow that has been leading in evening services in the, in the Protestant community. So she was not even saved. I swallowed the pride. And saw myself as nobody before God. And I thank God that that one decision has made me who I am. There is a restoration that comes with escorts of restoration. And that is the restoration between man and God. That is the restoration between man and God. When man is restored back to God, who can stand before you? Who can accuse you? Who can condemn you? Who can judge you? Nobody, not even devil himself. For there is therefore no more condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, for being justified by faith, I have peace with God through his son, Jesus Christ. He, the son, has set free. He's free indeed. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. It comes by restoration. I want you to begin to pray. Close your eyes wherever you are. Begin to speak to God. Some of you may need to, re to release people. You may re need to release people. You may need to release people. You may need to release people. <laughs> I want you to begin to pray. The Bible says as soon as Job prayed for forgiveness, restoration came running. Restoration came running. There are people in this place right now. There are people here. I want to help you like Job. Job helped his friends. Job prayed for his friends. Can you imagine that God said to Job, to the friends of Job, if Job does not pray for you, I will not forgive you. Can you imagine the level of audacity and grace God can give to a child of God? God said to the friends, is, is my friend Job that we pray for you. And that once he prays for you, everything is over. God has licensed me today to pray for somebody. There is somebody here God is saying, let my daughter Esther pray for you. Let my daughter Esther pray for you. If only she can pray for you, today we are not asking you for seven rams and seven bulls. No. Their own was complicated. They had to give an offering for their sins to be forgiven. But today Jesus has been offered for you and I. And I've been licensed to pray for you. And I want to pray for you. That it doesn't matter how horrible your relationship has been with God. Right now, there shall be restoration. And you shall be set free. I appeal to you. Don't walk away from this place. Rejecting this prayer. Don't 
don't be stubborn and don't be foolish. This is the hour God is saying. Let my daughter Esther Basike pray for you and I shall make things right with you. And I shall restore all that you have lost. And I shall give you double for your shame. I shall give you double for your trouble. If only you can surrender to me. If only my relationship with you can be rectified and corrected through salvation. Return and I shall return to you. Team up with me and good shall come your way. I appeal to you, hear my voice. If you are that individual that wants me to pray for you, for restoration of relationship between you and God, by redemption of the blood, lift up your hand. Raise your hand and say, Mommy, pray for me. Yes, I can see your hand. I can see your hands. I can see your hands all over. I can see your hands all over. Glory be to Jesus. I can see your hands all over. I did it and I did it and I was restored and I was licensed to do it for others and I will continue to do it for you until I see him in glory. Wherever you are, raise up your hands and if your hands are up, step forward for I have a gift for you. Not just salvation. There are other things that shall accompany you. Come, come my sister. Those that are up, come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Why are minister with me right now? Wherever you are, come. All over the auditorium, come. Jesus is here. He's here to restore. 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 Jesus is in the house. The blood is in the house. The blood is in the house and that blood is speaking for salvation. You unravel me with your melody. A powerful song. You surround me with a song. Wherever you are, I'm still waiting. Of deliverance. I am still waiting. From my enemy. Don't miss this opportunity. In all my days are gone. I am waiting you for you. You unravel me. You unravel me. With your melody. With your melody. You surround me. You surround me with a song. From your enemies. I 
I thought that you will celebrate with Jesus. You don't celebrate with God sitting down. You don't celebrate with Jesus or the president sitting down. Stretch your hands towards them and cooperate with God. When God's children are restored, you are sure the things you have lost yourself shall be restored. That is the, that is the game of salvation. When God benefits, <laughs> then you can be assured of your own benefits. Today, he has benefited. The QEG of today has benefited God. Congratulations, those of you in front. Just lift up your hands to the Lord. And look at how young they are. Just look at how young everyone is young. Just say these prayers after me. Lord Jesus, today, I come to you as a sinner. I am very sorry. Have mercy on me. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I surrender all to you. Please take over. Run my life. Direct my life. Holy Spirit, control my life. From now, I can say, I am a child of God. I am born again. I am free at last. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. And so our Father and our God, as Job prayed for his friends, and you received them, I stand at the altar of forgiveness and redemption to pray for these precious souls. And as you receive the friends of Job, I pray that God, you receive them in your eternal glory. And you will keep them till the very end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shall we give God a round of applause? You may be seated. No, wait, not you. I have a gift for you, wait. Have you been given paper to write your names? Sorry? They are going to do it this. So, how many of you, uh, somebody donated Bible for anybody that God saved today? So, another fellow to tell you how prepared we were to wait for you. You were our VIPs, you know? So, another fellow donated creams for those who will get saved. So, we decided that you will choose between the two. Bible or cream? So, if you want Bible, raise up your hand. Give those who want Bible. No, don't be ashamed. If you want cream, take cream. Don't follow them. Oh. Don't follow them. If you want cream, take cream, my dear. Those who want Bible, raise up your hand. Yes, give them Bible. Yes, sing. I see you everywhere. Can I autograph it for you? Just let me bless you. Let me autograph it. Just bring it. Give me viral.
you change your mind from cream to Bible. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, let me do like a child of God. You know, when you see the king, you see the smaller king. We have given you Bible. We will give you the cream. Yeah. So, give them the cream. As you rub it, it will not be an ordinary cream. God will turn your face into a glorious one. And the favor of God will begin to follow you wherever you go. As you read the word of God, you shall grow in the things of God. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, stars, queens, and uh, our wonderful kings and, prince and prince princes, God gave us 16 souls. And, and out of the 16 souls, one man. So, I want us to join the heavenly choir to celebrate a banquet. Anywhere there is Holy Communion, there is a banquet. So, we need to sing a very triumphal song that is danceable and clappable as they usher you to somewhere. Then they release you in two minutes, three minutes, so that you come as we transit to Holy Communion. Over to you, choir, give us a tontarous song as they move. And I want you to dance like somebody before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oyo wango sepubana sepubana siku zote Yeah. 